Greetings, my friends, and welcome to Mixed Media Keepsake Box. This is a box that I made, and uh, these are colors I just really liked. I got them from a piece of decoupage paper. That's where I got the palette. And you're going to want to choose the colors that you want. Uh, this box is from Hobby Lobby. Uh, there's a bunch of things I like about it, and it was only 10 bucks. And uh, I like the fact that it had this um, rim around it that I could put the resin, you know, in the top without a lot of hassle. I like the hardware. I think it's really pretty. And I like these inserts. And those are all places we can use our colors and our paper, you know, to make it prettier. So I'm going to begin by removing the hardware. And I always do this with these kind of projects because it's much easier. And we are going to silk screen this edge, so we're going to need it to be flat. And it's easy to put back on. We'll do that first. Now I've got my colors out, and as I said, those colors were chosen according to this piece of paper. I love the palette. It was easy for me. I could just go get uh, some nice acrylic paints and some uh, Sculpey Souffle to match it. That's what I did. And uh, I start with a stain. Um, I never paint wood with a thick coat of paint. It just seems like it's hard to get it to dry and it's hard to get it even. And I like a stain effect. So I just paint it on uh, in this thin way and then wipe it back off. And that way you can see the grain through there. Now we're going to put a finish on a lot of this stuff, but some of it we're not. So the grain showing through is just a real nice touch. So the green ones too. I just wiped it off and left it as a stain. So sponge painting, you know, is a really fun way to add your colors together and to kind of have them all be coordinated with the paper and with the clay. So I've got a sponge applicator there and I'm dampening it a little bit and then drying it back off. And I'm going to take my sponge applicator and just pounce it um, onto the glass and even the paper towel if need be and then onto the wood. And uh, you can get it as heavy or as light as you want to. I wasn't very scientific about this because I know I'm going to silk screen over it. And what I want in the end is just to have all the different colors in my paper and all the different colors in my souffle clay um, kind of showing through the silk screen, the laciness of the silk screen. So this is relaxing and fun. You know, it's not, it doesn't have to be a certain way. Just do it the way you want to. And I'm adding these colors as evenly, you know, as I can. And I'm even going to add some of that base color, the blue, back in and uh, let it dry. So when you've got that the way you want that, you're going to do all the sides of your box. I didn't do the drawers with sponge painting. I just left them with the green stain. Okay, so you're going to let that dry. And while that's drying, we're going to do our decoupage. I don't know if you've done decoupage before, but it's just way fun. You know, it's what I started with. Uh, it's the first craft I ever tried. I was just a child. So I make templates uh, based on the measurements of each of the places I'm going to put paper. Now this seems a little fussy, I know, but you know these are never perfectly square so you can measure them all day and then put glue in them and go to put your paper in them and then the paper doesn't quite fit. It's either short on one side or it's like a little bit curled up because it's too big. So if you make yourself a template, you put those arrows on it like you see, and you know how you're going to lay out your paper uh, after you cut it, it's going to fit because if the template fits, the paper's going to fit. Okay, So I really suggest that. I've done a lot of decoupage and honestly the finished product is so much nicer it's worth making those little templates. And you can always use an abate clay on later on if you don't need them. So now knowing it's going to fit, I've cut my paper exactly the right size and I'm going to settle it into this drawer and you want to push it into the corners and make sure it's not going to lift up any place because this is a little heirloom, okay? You don't want it to lift up. So now we'll talk about the silk screens. We're going to lay them down and make sure they're secure and centered. I'm using that uh, hardware, which you see I didn't take that off. It's because it had nails instead of screws and I didn't want to mess it up. So I just left it there. I took the rest off. But anyway, uh, when you get your your uh, silk screen placed the way you want to, use a little painter's tape and uh, 
secure it down. Just one side will do. And that gives you a little spot to put your paint. And I'm just using a little credit card to spread it with. They've got really cool like rubber squeegees, little crafty squeegees and all kinds of things that you can get. Um, so, uh, you know, if you if you have that, fine. I didn't have it, so I'm just using my old insurance card. <clears throat> so I'm going to take my white paint and I'm going to spread it. And that's probably, I don't know, that's a little bit more paint than I needed there, but you know, you're going to live and learn. It's okay. The paper towel is for that purpose. You know, you can wipe off the card when you get ready to. And just make sure all the cells of the silk screen, uh, you know, have paint in them. And you don't have to scrape it really hard, but you just mainly want it even. So, you know, I learn as I go with silk screens. It seems like I, you know, I learn every time I do it, but they always turn out pretty. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect. This uh, box has kind of a, I don't know, kind of a Baroque and uh, lacy look to it. So it looks fine. That looks fine. So you can do that with all the sides. Um, I did it different ways on the top than I did on the bottom. You'll see that in the pictures. Be sure you put your uh, silk screen in some water, okay? So it doesn't dry out. So our Skinner Blend is going to be a really easy one. I've made three strips of my clay, souffle, um, on a number one or thickest setting of my clay machine. And I'm putting together a very casual blend. You know, you can cut all these angles and make them fit like, you know, geometry and stuff. But, you know, I, I don't do it. Uh, it looks really pretty like this, so, you know, why bother? So I'm going to put these together like this. These are the colors I want side by side. And the only thing to know about this is to be sure to put the colors, you know, beside each other that you want to blend. I want to make sure I've got some nice baby blue in that middle section and enough green and turquoise, you know, to bring it all together with the paper. So you're going to do your ratios just the way you want to. Don't spend too much time with any kind of perfection because, you know, all these blends go wonky like crazy all the time that you're making them. You know, so having to be perfect when you put them in a the machine, there's no advantage to it. <laughs> so uh, just throw them together, roll over them, uh, pick them up, place it in there, fold side down. We do that to keep the yeah, air pockets from getting out of control. See right there, I'm not going to trim that. I don't care about that. Just throw it on in. There's plenty of time to trim it when we're done. You're mainly wanting to make sure it's just going to fit the lid. We know it's going to fit the lid. Okay, that way. Pass it through there till you like it. So I like it. Looks good. Now I've got a template for the top, of course, because I really, really want my top to fit. And that's going to be, you know, I want it right in that, uh, in that box shape rim on the top. I'm going to trim it up a little bit. And I'm going to uh, silk screen this. Now let me tell you something. If you really blow it on your silk screen, don't forget you have the other side of this. Don't think, you know, I haven't done it. Okay? So you got the other side. So don't sweat it. And then if you really screw up super bad, um, get some alcohol and get that paint off of there while it's still wet and try it again. Okay? So don't be shy. It's alright. It's going to be pretty, you know, either way. I made every mistake and yet, you know, you still end up with good stuff. So you mash that down pretty well. Make sure it's nice and, you know, tight to the clay as much as you can. I only tape the two edges. It's just better that way. It gives the, the paint and the air a place to go out the edges there. I'm going to do it much the same way as I did that other one. Okay. Pull that paint down and make sure that it gets all over the place. Uh, keep your paper towel, it's out of the frame there, so you can wipe off your card. And I was a little more careful scraping off paint on this top, uh, so I could get a little more of a lacy, delicate look and not be, you know, too globby. Uh, so I scraped it a few more times, and I think it turned out just fine. Now you got your top. You got your pretty lace circles. You got your strips of lace on the side. Um, showing you that with the paper in the bottom. I already did that a little while ago. 
and uh, it's looking pretty good. So I'm going to apply some uh, little embellishments to it. This is a pair of earrings that I have. And um, I wish I knew where I got them. I, I just don't remember. But, you know, I'm sure you have that kind of stuff around. If you use some super glue before you put your screw in, it's really good insurance. I always do. And, uh, you know, these little feet on the bottom are giving me a really good way to gauge uh, whether the pieces are centered. Just take your bearings there and make sure you got them centered. It's easy to do. And then put your screws back in. Uh, these are really pretty. I love these things. These are by Vintage. You get them at uh, Hobby Lobby, I believe. And then Vintage has a site. I'll give you a link down in the description box. But they're so pretty. And I'm going to do them the same way. A little bit of glue and the screws. Make sure that they're nice and secure. I like these kind of boxes to last as close to forever as you can get. Okay, So I've got these all ready. You see some of the grain of the wood affects the um, silk screen a little bit, but it doesn't matter. It's, it turns out really pretty anyway. So there's my top. I've baked it. Be sure you bake it, okay? You want to be able to move it around. I baked it uh, for 45 minutes at 275. And now I'm going to choose a few embellishments to go on top. I'm thinking about those straight pieces, but I'm not going to end up using them. I just <coughs> wanted to see how they looked. Uh, but I ended up using the round one because I like those diamond shapes to be more exposed. And so uh, that's what I chose in the end. But, you know, that's the fun of it, laying it out, thinking about it. So I did secure that center one with some super glue uh, in the end and set it aside to dry. I'm going to get my Gorilla two-part epoxy. You know, there's just no way that I want this thing to come loose or have, you know, any chance of loosening over time. So I'm putting my Gorilla Epoxy on here. I'm going to take my baked sheet of uh, polymer clay that's silk screened. And I'm going to uh, be sure and clean this off really well because it's kind of hard to get your caps off if they, uh, you know, if it squishes on the underneath the cap. Then you have to stir it up to activate it anyway. So it's kind of cool. I could just stir it up on top of here and uh, spread it evenly. I'm using uh, little craft popsicle sticks, or I guess they're craft sticks, right? A popsicle. Uh, anyway, I'm using these little craft sticks and I'm stirring it up to blend it. And you know, you think these epoxies are hard to use, and really they're not. They're pretty cooperative. I'm taking my stick and I'm staying away from the very edges, but I'm spreading it out nice and thin on there and nice even, and pressing it down and placing it the way I want it on top there. Okay, we'll move that around, get it centered up, and make sure it's really down. Uh, I've stuck that embellishment on the center with a little bit of super glue. Um, this is some uh, two-part resin. I've mixed the two parts together. You'll see how to do it on the box, whichever kind you get. And I'm going to stir it for a full five minutes. Um, that's the key to resin making, okay? You put your two parts together. And you measure them carefully and all that. That's about uh, one and a half ounces of each part. But it's that stirring part for five minutes. That's what's going to save you, okay? You've got to make sure your resin is crystal clear and it'll be cloudy up until the time, it's, you know, that it's not. So I set the timer for five minutes because I know that if I stir it for that length of time that my resin will be clear. If you have a lot of bubbles, you can... Uh, Pass that little torch over there. See that orange torch? And get them at the Mini Mart. God knows what they're for. I don't know. Maybe they're for crack or something, but <clears throat> I use them for this. Anyway, you uh, get your resin nice and even. Just take your time. You don't want to slop it over the edge or anything. And get it to fall all the places you want it to go. You know, worst case scenario, you can uh, add another coat. But this worked out fine for me, you know, depending on the size box you have. Just keep a couple molds around, and that way if you mix up too much, you know, you could always use them in other molds. So pl find a level place and then forget about it. Don't touch it. Don't look at it. Don't think about it. Leave it alone. Because you want to cover it with like a baking pan for 24 hours, okay? Just forget about the resin. 
So in the meantime, you can do the interior. Um, I did mine with another coat of Mod Podge, which I believe I used to secure that paper. I might have used white glue, I, I don't remember, but you can use either one to, to stick it down. And the Mod Podge makes a really nice finish on the inside of that wood there. Very nice. And you can use it uh, on the external wood too. And it uh, it lasts quite a while. I've had really good luck with it. There's all kinds of finishes. You might be using Varathane for your exterior or your side wood or whatever. Uh, but you know, I'm already in there with um, with the paper and it does need to be sealed. Okay? And there you go. That's all done. I just put the lid back on and it feels good. It feels smooth. The inside looks really pretty with the green and the paper and everything. It's got that little mirror that came in there. And all my sides are coordinated. And I can see my colors kind of peeking through here and there. So this was just a really fun thing to make. I cut this video way down short because it's what people want, you know. But it took me, a, you know, a, a whole day uh, to make. And it was a wonderful day. I enjoyed it. So I hope you enjoyed it too. See you next time. Bye-bye.